Hello, good people. Welcome to our show. Hello, bad people. Welcome to our show. Hello, guys. Welcome. Today we are going to discuss more about email marketing, how you can get results, high open rate, sales, clicks, everything. I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Megan. Pusha Zen, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Ah, doing great. Looking forward to learn more about that. Today, Wednesday. And I love to learn on Wednesday, as I like on Friday, on Monday, <laughs> on Sunday, <laughs> at any day. <laughs> Megan, before we start, just tell more about your self-experience, background, and why you decided to pay attention to this channel, email marketing. Yeah, so I guess a little bit about my professional self. Um, your bio of me makes me sound very, very good. Um, <laughs> so about a little bit about me, I am the senior email developer at Cinch. Uh, there I cover all of our marketing emails on the email team of uh, three brands that are pretty well known in the industry. And those brands are Mailgun, Mailjet, and Email on Acid. So if you're the person who's sending a lot of transactional emails, uh, emails based on user behavior. Mailgun is going to be your place to go. If you're a small business, uh, sending out emails to your customer, Mailjet is the perfect solution for you. And for that email Q&A, if you're an email developer or sending out, you know, kind of like fancier emails, uh, email on Acid is going to be the place to go to QA those emails and see how they look across all different clients and devices, check your spam scores, uh, make sure you're getting that inbox placement and all that jazz. Awesome. Awesome. Megan, I want to ask yeah. about emails more because I get a lot of emails <laughs> yeah. every single day and most of them are irrelevant <laughs> with my uh, <laughs> services with my products uh people reach out to me to ask uh various questions for example uh i got email uh i know you're expert in fashion me this t-shirt costs like five dollars you know? <laughs> <laughs> i'm not an expert in fashion uh and far away from that uh i think it's important to uh, use email marketing smart because we get a lot of these spam messages uh, i usually lead all of them to my spam inbox they can spend time together to communicate how to personalize this message to learn the recipients before sending anything else so i want to ask about personalization can you yes. tell how to do it because it's not only to write my name yeah hi anatoly mm -hmm. yeah i need to personalize the message as well of course it's important to have the name but Mm -hmm. how to personalize today when we have so much templates yeah so personalization nowadays definitely needs to go beyond just using your name you know customers are savvy now and they know if you're just saying hey first name they know that that's just data that you have on them oh hey jay i just saw the comment pop up um <laughs> so you know that's where you need to have really good data practices in place and leverage the information that you can gather into your um, esp so say you're in e-com business you know what information do you have about your customers and what they have bought in the past and can you use that to try to predict what they may need in the future. You know, it's like personalization. It, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, you just bought a couch. So now I'm going to send you a ton of emails about more couches. You know, maybe instead it's that you send an email about a table or a side table. You know, it's, it's leveraging that sort of logic and data in your system to give people what they may be looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We have two different uh, methods to send in emails when you send to your subscribers uh, when someone subscribed to your email and when you send call emails uh, to uh, possible uh, customers I don't know or people who can make some actions so Megan can you tell about cold emails why I get a hundred emails a day but sometimes I get like 200 300 emails a day and I lead all of them to spam and box but uh, it, it doesn't stop people to send me this email so yeah. can, can you tell about the reason <laughs> yeah so in the b2b space i know sometimes like cold emails feels like a necessary email um 
when I do email marketing, I work very much in permissions-based email part email marketing, uh, where we look for explicit consent from our subscribers. Um, I even think in a B2B context, you need to be looking at that explicit um, subscribers consent model, as opposed to just blasting cold emails, because yes, those emails will go to spam. And it makes it increasingly harder to get people's attention when you're just sending these messages that they don't want. Um, so like, especially in that business sense, I would start looking at ways to create content that are relevant to the audience you're going after? And can you get them to trade their email address for a PDF, for an ebook, for an exclusive podcast recording? Um, you know, you can start looking at those different types of strategies so that you start spending your money emailing people who want to hear from you rather than just throwing into the abyss and hoping that somebody responds. Um, you'll see a much higher conversion rate if you're emailing those people who actually want to hear from you as opposed to the people who may or may not want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. I remember Mark Twain. Once he said about writing a letter that he uh, doesn't have time to write a short letter that is why he usually writes long letter mm -hmm. uh, but when mark twain lived he didn't have emails <laughs> <laughs> and today we have no choice uh, we use a lot email marketing to reach out to journalists and they usually check if it's a long email even if you provide the most valuable insights they skip it you know <laughs> they don't don't care so uh, can you tell how to craft this skills that mark twain didn't have in his time you know to write short emails <laughs> well you know i think it's a little bit of a it, depending on your audience it can be a little bit of a myth that people don't read long emails i love newsletters um so like i read longer emails all the time i think your content just needs to be interesting so like if you're selling something maybe that's not the place for a super long email, or you need to kind of bring people through the email in a way that makes them keep scrolling. Um, if you're more of a long form newsletter type email, then I think that's like the perfect place to go a little bit more long form. But really, I think for like copywriting, I mean, I'm not the world's greatest copywriter, um, but a lot of it I think comes down to practice, uh, knowing your audience. If you have a big enough audience, you could always test that longer messaging versus that shorter mes messaging. Um, A-B testing kind of gets into its whole own thing, um, but you can always start testing that sort of thing. Um, you can leverage tools like Grammarly that will tell you when you're using extraneous words, if things seem confusing, it'll tell you the grade level that you're writing at and all that jazz. So there are writing tools out there to help you um, like condense and to convey what you're trying to get across. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to ask about two different people. Uh, mm -hmm. First, it's me. Uh, for example, if I get email that promise like uh, you can earn uh, 10K for a few hours, I, mm -hmm. I skip this email. And of course, mm -hmm. I want to get this money, but I skip because I don't believe <laughs> you know, in such nonsense. But my son will open this email, will learn carefully and think, okay, I need to earn this money. And I explained to him, to him many times. No, 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 no. In, in this world, people can manipulate, to cheat, to use different methods to convince people like you, naive people without experience, extended experience. So... Um, I want to ask about learning your recipients. Uh, I'm against to cheat anyone, uh, kids, uh, parents, adults, it doesn't matter. But how to learn recipients? How to get insights that someone uh, opens emails with promising like this? Uh, okay, any other example. Uh, but uh, how to learn and give uh, strong words in headline? Because uh, people don't know your email without clicking headline. So you need to convince in this short headline. Any tips about that? <laughs> yeah, you'll, I mean, you'll find all about like your subject line. You'll find all sorts of advice about subject lines. Um, you'll have some people who say, make it like really like fun and witty and whatnot. And then there are other people for accessibility purposes will say to make it really straightforward. When it comes to subject lines, I think it's really great to A-B test them to see 
what your audience will open. And then from there, you can start crafting those subject lines to get closer and closer to what they're looking for. Uh, because for example, if you're writing something that may be fun and witty, but it has nothing to do with your email, once they open, they might feel that bait and switch and stop opening up your emails. On the other end, like maybe your subject line is too simple and boring, so they're not opening up either. And it's just like, so audience dependent that I always recommend that you need to A-B test these things to see what your audience is into. Because what someone might say is a best practice might not work for your for you. Um, so you can take that best practice, try it, see what happens, and then just keep iterating on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's interesting about uh, the email design. Uh, for example, if I see any pictures or design in emails, I always keep them. <laughs> I have no time, you know. Mm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, because it's me. But if you send such email to my wife, you can write new collection, you know, nice looking pictures, you know, mm -hmm. clothes, dress, anything. Yeah, you will get a new client 100%, 99%. So, <laughs> Megan, can you tell how to figure out, do we need to use simple text without design, friendly manner, or it's better to draw this nice looking design? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's place for both, you know, like everything in email marketing, I feel like you can start every single answer with it depends, like, there's room for both. I've used both. I've seen big e-com brands use both. Um, I do think people respond to images really well. Uh, there are also email um, programs out there that will do like three lines of text with a text link and they'll do great with that email. So it, it's really super, like, I, I keep giving this the answer. It's so dependent on your audience. I think visuals are always great. Uh, mm -hmm. to show people what a shirt looks like, what a book looks like, um, you know, whatever you're trying to get people to buy. Having that visual and having good visuals, I feel like at the get-go is always great to have. And then as you craft different maybe automations, nurture series, whatever you're doing, you can throw in those like plainer text looking emails. I don't call them plain text emails because that's like an actual thing that gets sent out along with like your HTML email, but to make it look like a letter or just like a regular text based email, um, you can start throwing those in also as a way to convert people. Um, so I would recommend experimenting with both and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Megan, I opened your LinkedIn profile because mm -hmm. I love opening LinkedIn profiles <laughs> and I see in your bio a word yeah. winion. You know, I love this word award winning <laughs> can you tell why you got award what kind of award and how uh i see in email developer so uh, can you yes. tell how you stand out from the rest uh, to get this award <laughs> oh so yeah so we want yeah so for it was a group effort the award we won um was it was for like best um like b2b email campaign or something like that um mm -hmm. I kind of always forget the title of that one, which is terrible. Um, so that was with my coworkers, Julia Ritter, who's our senior email marketing manager at Cinch, and Kim Kirby, who's our graphic designer, for our email camp email from 2022. So email camp is the free virtual conference that MailGen Email and Acid put on, and it's we actually just had our 2023 version. They're always a lot of fun. Our themes are different every year. So last year, we created an interactive email uh, could we do it over two days with two different tracks. Day one is always email marketing strategy based stuff. Deliverability is often thrown in there too. And day two is all about email development, which is like my favorite day. Um, so in that email, I made it interactive by having these two little like day one and day two buttons. So you could see who the speakers were on each day without having to take up like a ton of email real estate and having people scroll and scroll and scroll. You could just choose like which day to look at um, with corresponding uh, CTAs at the bottom. Um, yeah, that email did really well for us. And we were really excited to be recognized with that award. I work with like the best team ever. So it's always super fun to put those types of emails together. Awesome. Awesome. You mentioned about B2B uh, yes. and I cooperate with many B2B brands, uh, big brands. And um, I'm interested about uh, how to write emails that transfer data to decision makers who can 
transfer this data to other uh, decision makers <laughs> you know it's a uh, tough scheme but uh, i often see issue when you reach out to the right people but when you uh, have no great words or can't convince this decision maker it's hard to get results so any tips how to do it in a simple email when you have long presentation many insights a lot of benefits yeah it works but in email it's hard it's so tough to explain yeah. everything about your products mm -hmm. uh, especially for b2b if someone needs to share this data with other decision makers any tips about that <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit outside of the realm of what I do. Um, I would say being someone who's also on the recipient end mm -hmm. of a lot of those types of emails, the best piece of advice I would give is to research the person you're reaching out to. Because like I've gotten a lot of emails from people who clearly didn't research who I am or where I work because they'll be pitching services that like the company I work for offers. Um, so my biggest piece of advice is just to like research people and make sure you have the details about them correctly because there's like it's really annoying when somebody emails you and they can't even get the basic details right so that's what i would do there but other than that i don't have much other advice because that's kind of outside the realm of what i do yeah i got it uh, uh let's talk about templates uh, yeah it's important in uh, marketing to stand out from the rest when you can provide something new special uh, but uh, if we open any email service provider we can find a lot of templates is it good idea to use them uh, because i think it's tough to develop a new email mm -hmm. html code for each email and i know companies that have no time with that they have no experience yeah. they want to get personalized experience with templates so tell how to do it right yeah templates are great use templates um so on my end where i work i we have custom templates um i developed a whole email design system that works across all three of our brands so that i can quickly create emails um and having templates cuts down your email time by you know hours they're great to use um say you need to change something like an address changes social media leak changes your logo changes you can just make that change in the template and you're all set. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend using templates to speed up your production time. Absolutely go for it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Megan, I like your, uh, this name, Mail Gun. You know, mm -hmm. I want to know about your bullets. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> if you shoot, you need to shoot uh, to get results uh, with these bullets. Uh, and uh, we have many great companies good companies mailchimp uh, uh, almost for everything for newsletter yeah. for link building um, i don't know yeah name them uh, so tell your benefits why you are better than others what is your strong side and why people need to <laughs> cooperate with you <laughs> you're letting me pitch um yeah. i mean we have really reliable service so mailgun in particular has a really large customer base um if you go onto our website we work with some pretty huge brands um mailjet in particular is great for software engineers to leverage our api so you can trigger like all sorts of different behaviors um like if you're in the us if you get like the um usps emails every day to tell you what's coming in the mail like that's leveraged by mailgun technology which is really cool um for mailjet it's a very simple editor we actually just released all of our holiday templates and we just launched our um ai copywriter which is really cool uh literally launched this week so mailjet can help you make emails even faster they're beautiful it leverages mjml um so for the coders out there that's mailjet markup language which is like a templating language type well uh, not a templating language it's an email framework to rapidly create uh, responsive emails um so you know your emails will look beautiful whenever they go out uh if you're a small business you need help writing you can leverage that ai copywriter um, and just type in a description of what you're looking for you hit a button 
and it gives you copy, which is great. I've seen it in action and it works pretty well. Um, so you can give that a try and email on acid, which is like my baby and near and dear to my heart because that is what email developers are most likely to use. Uh, you need that to make sure all of your emails look beautiful everywhere. You can leverage um, the analytics to see where people are opening up your emails, what email clients and all that. So you can start targeting a little bit better. Um, I highly recommend checking it out. You can make sure your email looks good on over a hundred clients and devices now, which is just like amazing. Um, so definitely go check that one out too, especially if you're an email developer. Okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to test. Uh, I don't like guns. Uh, let me be honest. <laughs> but, I don't like guns either. It's okay. <laughs> but male guns, <laughs> it's like another experience. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let's talk about AI. You mentioned that you have this AI yeah. uh, copywriter who can uh, mm -hmm. craft these emails. Uh, and uh, um, I, I often collect complaints about AI. It's not... Mm -hmm human uh, it's like robotic uh, nothing special uh, and uh, it's a great rewriting tool but rewriting not writing something new uh, can you tell why users need to use your ai uh, copywriting uh, tool um, if we have this complaints that when recipients get emails or any other text they can feel it's not written by human mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, how you decide such issue <laughs> Yeah, so I have a lot of thoughts about AI. Um, and if you head over to the email and acid website after this, uh, we actually did a webinar about email marketing AI with the Action Rocket team. And we have we have two webinars. One's about email marketing strategy, um, copywriting, all that jazz. The other one's about email development, which me and um, Jay Oram, who I think is watching right now, him and I spoke about it. Um, so my thing with AI is that it cannot replace a human. So if you're using, say, the AI copy um, or chat GPT or whatever, you're still going to have to read it. You're likely going to have to make adjustments to, you know, give it your brand's voice. You can train the stuff to do a brand voice and stuff now. Um, but like you can't set and forget it. Like you can still tell when something's AI generated. So I think it's a great way to help you know, the small businesses. I think it's a great way to brainstorm on ideas if you need help getting started. I know for me writing, like the hardest thing is always getting started. Um, so it can kind of prompt you there. So I think it's a good, it's becoming a good tool to use alongside your work and not to replace your work quite yet. Um, I can tell you for email development, like it's terrible. Um, it just doesn't know enough yet. So like email developers were super safe. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I would say use it with your work, not in replacement of your work. So you are safe now, but what, <laughs> what do you think about the future? You know, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not that worried about it, to be honest, because I think, I think there's always going to have to be a human touch. Nothing replaces human connection. And there will always have to be a human touch, especially if we hit like more of those enterprise levels, like it may do a great job, like doing simple things, but like, we're still going to have to nurture talent um, to take over for when like people like me retire in like 30 years, maybe if we'd retire ever. Um, but like, we're, we still have to train people up to be able to handle the bigger problems that AI will not be able to like, we're we're all we're gonna need to be there. I just don't think it's gonna totally take over. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. But I am so bad with my predictions forecast. I <laughs> I use my crystal ball, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> this ball cheated me many times when I bought crypto. I felt like crypto will go up, but it went uh -huh. down. <laughs> so I don't. <laughs> I yeah, don't I don't believe this crypto crypto at all. So, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I play with crypto. I play with that, but uh, I never put all eggs in one basket, you know. So yeah. if I lose, I can allow to yeah. lose and to stay happy with that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, and about AI, I think yeah, it's important to uh, have this human touch to edit. And uh, for example, I checked a few studies that. 5% of marketers uh, around this number uh, lost jobs because of AI, mm -hmm. content creators. Uh, I don't think that these people lost jobs because of AI. They lost because they didn't adapt to AI. It's like, you know, when farmers got a first tractor, yeah. If you didn't start 
you don't start to drive this tractor you can't be productive you can't be effective against others if you use ai for example i adapt to ai we create tools with ai uh, about uh, forecast about uh, different niches we increase traffic a lot uh, we got mm -hmm. a lot of sales uh, because of course yeah we don't use like bullet points golden button we edit uh, we spend time to edit content, but we can do it much faster, much better. We can mm -hmm. get great calculations and results. So uh, if you adapt, you are safe. A hundred percent you are safe. But if you skip this tool, yeah, uh, you are not safe. <laughs> it's better and, to use. Yeah. Yeah, I say, and I think what we may also see is that since the market was flooded with so many content creators, what we may see is people who are truly good at the craft rise to the top. And those who may not be as good at it have to pivot elsewhere. I mean, like I use myself as an example in that. I went into the working market as a graphic designer. And like I'm an okay, like I'm an okay graphic designer, but like I ended up falling into email marketing because I I couldn't get hired for another graphic design job. So <laughs> I ended up falling into email marketing. And now this is like where I discovered it, it's where I flourish. So like, I just think it might cause some people to potentially just pivot their careers in a different way, which I think is, I think is okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I think people will be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to embrace the pivot is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Megan, I want to ask your personal opinion about AI because uh, let yeah. me uh, share some insights before asking. Uh, I mean, like, I think people uh, lose jobs uh, uh, and AI can't replace because uh, it's hard to create content without real experience. Uh, and we still need to have uh, these writing skills. Even if you use AI, uh, you need to know how to write text that people want to read. If you have the skills, then you can uh, edit results from AI. Uh, you can set up the right prompts uh, by using AI. Because if you use generic prompts, uh, when my brothers ask me, please help to create content about accounting, I couldn't. I couldn't because I didn't know anything about this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I tried with uh, to create content about weight loss. I couldn't. <laughs> I didn't know mm -hmm. how to create good content about this topic. I mean, like, it's important to have skills. It's important to know yeah. how to write. Then you can get great results by using AI. Uh, so can you tell for mm -hmm. someone who lost jobs? Because I, I got such requests. Oh, AI can replace me. AI can take my jobs. What I need to do? What? you do you know uh to i don't know not to have this <laughs> yeah i mean i think i'm a big fan of niching down so i think if you can become an yeah. expert somewhere where there's a need that makes your demand that much greater um like i niche down into email development um and now i may be able to Le start leveraging automations and different things like how i have my email design system um i can start leveraging these things to make myself faster at it um but i am a total believer in learning your craft and honing your craft before adding in those shortcuts uh because like you were saying if you don't have that skill you're not going to know if something's wrong to be able to troubleshoot like if i was just creating emails via AI and didn't know how to code, I wouldn't know if any of the code's correct or not. And I could be sending yeah. out bad emails. It's the same thing with writing, right? Um, I've done tests with ChatGPT, like looking up different people or asking about different information. And the information has pretty much always been outdated. Uh, so you definitely need to know these things before leveraging an AI to do it for you. So you can keep that quality assurance in check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice, awesome. Megan. I yeah. want to ask about your mistakes and uh, I, <laughs> you know, I, I personally, I made a lot of mistakes. I keep doing them. Yeah. And, uh, so it's hard. It's tough when you start something new, uh, mm -hmm. you need to do mistakes. You need to do it uh, and you can learn how to improve, how yes. to go ahead. Well, when I started PR with email marketing, I started my PR campaigns. I, I wrote a bunch of press releases. I don't remember exactly uh -huh. how many, a lot. 
and I failed. <laughs> I didn't get mm-hmm. any links mentioned, <laughs> nothing. You know, I spent so much time. But I learned how it works. I learned mm-hmm. how, why I need to write press releases that bring uh, something new, valuable, uh, trending. Uh, and I hired people who can write these press releases. I hired people who can pitch them to the right journalists. Uh, and today we got mentions on CNN. Bloomberg, Dow Jones for our investing trading websites. I want to ask you, uh, can mm-hmm. you list mistakes that you made before and how you learn from them to become a much better uh, email marketer expert? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Are you even an email marketer if you haven't made a bunch of mistakes? Like we have all made mistakes. Oh my gosh. It's like, what's even the worst of them? Um, I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, the most recent one, which I still find really entertaining, um, actually happened during email camp, um, the lead up to it. So during email camp, uh, my coworker, Julie and I did an email debrief. It was essentially like a live email critique. Uh, we needed emails from people and I messed up creating the email, um, because we put some first name personalization in it. We wrote it like a letter. And when I exported my HTML, I had been testing personalization because I can do that in the email program that I use. And I did not realize when exporting that the personalization was going to stay in there. So when we sent out the email, everybody got, hi, Megan. So for a couple of hours, we named our entire list Megan. Um, But the great thing about it is that we sent out an oops email, which usually for something like that, we wouldn't but I thought it would be great if we did. And that email performed really well, which is great. And then it gave us content for the email debrief of things to talk about to start off, which was really fun. Um, So all's well that ends well with that one. Um, Another time um, in my previous position, we did everything in MailChimp and I was coding in an editor that could sync my templates to MailChimp. And I was creating, custom email templates in there that MailChimp has a templating language. And I had added an additional text area in my template. And I had an email waiting to be sent out. It was already scheduled. And what I did not think about at that time until this happened was that when I synced the template changes over to MailChimp, that it was going to affect that email that had not gone out yet. Like Mm -hmm. in my head, it was scheduled. Nothing was touching it. It would go out fine. Except when it went out, it ended up this new text area. I had um, like placeholder text in there. Um, So people who got this paragraph of text, that made zero sense because it was showing. And I just had no idea when it sent out that that was going to happen. So that made me very mindful of template changes and how it affects other things. Uh, Yeah, I've gotten... You know, there have been team failures of not catching wrong dates, you know, all sorts of things. That's why having like a really good QA checklist is so important. So that's like something that I've developed over time is just like your checklist of what do you look at before the email goes out to try to minimize those potential uh, errors. Awesome. Awesome. Valuable. Uh, Megan, I have some students in my network. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have business owners who ignore some channels, but want to extend experience with these channels, including email marketing. Uh, So, but I found uh, if someone understands how it works, then results are much better. It's not like to find a tool like uh, Cinch Mailgun uh, that will decide all your problems. You need to understand how it works. You need to learn. And for example, if I take a new tool, and I have a lot of great tools in my tool set. Uh, if I use some tools uh, for a long time, then I'm so confident how to use it, mm-hmm. how to find. But even if I take the most simple tool, uh, you know, I need to figure out, to spend time, uh, to worry about the results. So m- many different sites. I want to ask you, if you started today from scratch, without any experience, knowledge, skills, it's your first day in email marketing. What Mm -hmm. would you do today if you learned everything from scratch? Oh, my gosh. So I guess the I guess the question is that that well, that's such a huge question. It's I guess my question to you is, am I writing the copy, putting the email together and sending it? Uh, Doing all of it? 
I mean, like uh, this question for people who wanna become marketing yeah. experts. Yeah, like, like overall email marketers. Yes, uh, to okay. get uh, to get the basic, to get the basic yeah. for business owners who wanna okay. jump on this field yeah. and cooperate so, with experts. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So what I would do is go to the email and asset website, start looking at the blog. There's lots of great content on there, uh, just about tons of things about email marketing in general. Um, if you're on LinkedIn or even Twitter, uh, there are a couple of email marketers that you should definitely start following, um, especially if you're like a freelancer, a solopreneur type thing. Um, I would for sure like start following Summer Waste. She's a copywriter based in Pakistan. She's amazing. Um, she did a talk recently about how she got a 100% conversion rate on an email series that she wrote. Um, I was not at that conference, did, did, so did I she, have not seen this whole story. But she did, got did she send one email? Did she send um, one email? I, I, I <laughs> don't know the entire story. If it was one, it may have been a series of emails. Um, a hundred percent. Um, Summer is a wonderful person. I am friends with her. She's great. Um, yeah, it's like follow her. Val Geisler is great to follow. Um, Hillel Berg's great to follow. Um, so just start finding those people in the community. There is the email geeks community that I always recommend. Um, I will say in there, we don't really condone cold emailing all that much. So if you come in asking about that, you will not really find the answers there. But for like consent-based email marketing, nonprofit, e-com, SaaS, like it doesn't really matter your industry, um, you will find answers there. It's a great community of people. I hang out in there all the time. Um, you can also um, check out MailJet's Email Academy. We do a monthly webinar series talking about different things in email marketing. The last one we did, did was about creating holiday campaigns. Um, I'm not sure what the next webinar is about. I'd have to look that up. But they happen on a monthly basis. So you can always go to the MailJet website and sign up to learn more. Um, definitely recommend those. They're pretty great. Um, and I would say that's a really great, that's a great place for people to start are those resources. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I know one more resource. You need to follow Megan on LinkedIn. <laughs> She's active. <laughs> she has this valuable bombs. <laughs> Guys, you can go to an emergency room to get all this valuable insights. So <laughs> I follow, I recommend to follow because I personally follow because I need insights. I know email marketing is very important to get sales results in my company. Uh, Megan, I have my final question about the yes. future. I told yeah. you my crystal ball doesn't work you know it, it mm -hmm. failed many times <laughs> i don't know how to fix it. so i can't predict this future but i want to ask you what do you think about email marketing what kind of future will be because many things are coming technologies are growing fast apple yep. is going to launch this headset augmented reality i don't know what kind of future will be but mm -hmm. yeah i'm excited so your tips about the future <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think email is here to stay. You know, we see social media networks come and go. We're seeing that happen with Twitter now. You can build up these huge followings, can all just get wiped out in a day. And with email marketing, especially that consent-based email marketing, you are building that list of fans who just want to hear from you. You know, that's your data and you can take that data. And even if you need to change, you know, email service providers, you can take that list and move it somewhere else. So like you own that list, um, which is why I think email marketing is definitely here to stay. Um, even though people do complain about getting too many emails, it's still the number one way people want to hear from brands. Um, I think if you use that in conjunction with, you know, some SMS marketing, um, you can build a really great strategy to talk to people. Awesome. Yeah. I remember Rand Fishkin said to my event that he uh, will change one email subscriber to 10 followers on social media <laughs> because yeah. social media can change algorithms. Uh, yeah. And we saw Facebook change, YouTube Google, mm -hmm. all platforms can change algorithms and it can impact to all your efforts. But email yep. marketing is in the case. So it's in your hand. Yep. You can control it and manage it. Uh, yep. Megan, it's a big pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so Same. much.
Thank, thank you for having me on. Podcast. Yeah, tell the best way how to keep learning from you, how to reach out to you, how to follow you. Yeah, so you can um, follow me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm getting a little bit more active there. I just spun up my Instagram account again, um, which is Meg underscore codes underscore email. Um, you can see me put up some things there. There's not a lot of content yet, but I'm working on it. Um, if you're an email developer, check out my show, Notes from the Dev. That's all about email development. There will be more of that coming in the new year. I'm currently in the planning stages of what's going to happen next year with the show. And there are some pretty exciting ideas we have. So definitely subscribe to the Email and Acid uh, YouTube channel so that you get um, notifications of when we put up new episodes. Um, and those, that's really the best spots. My website's currently down. You'll see a website link places. Don't click on it. My website is currently not online at all. I'm very slowly working on a new one. Don't know when it's going to launch. The deadline is someday. Um, so yeah, really LinkedIn and Instagram. I'm on Twitter a little bit, but not as much anymore. Um, so LinkedIn and Instagram are going to be your best bets for following along with email stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Love it, Megan. It's a big pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for Same taking here. part, for sharing all these valuable bombs with my audience. I'm going to spend time in the emergency room to consume all this uh, yeah. insights. Guys, I recommend to anyone to follow Megan. I do it. You need to do it as well, because <laughs> if you don't follow, you can make a big mistake. Okay, guys, love you. See you. <laughs>